All right, and we are back on the 3 a.m. Coney with my favorite segment, Unearthing Cincinnati's Past, with the proprietor, Greg Hand. Thank you for coming back on. Always a pleasure. And I asked you to uh, to look for, we, we had talked about the pandemic, we had talked about New Year's uh, 1921. I like going into kind of like a century ago, things that are um, kind of happening right now in, in 2021. Um, and cicadas, you have you have some uh, our our Cincinnati's long history with uh, dealing with these 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 beasts. Yeah, it's it's amazing. You know, if if you work back every seventeen years, mm -hmm. um, there was a cicada emergence in eighteen hundred, eighteen hundred, and there, All the way there back. are some wow. Yeah. There, um, so, so uh, as far as Europeans uh, showing up in this general area, uh, you know, Cincinnati was settled in in 1788. Well, that that was um, that was 12 years uh, before uh, they would have seen the first emergence. So, you, so you would think, you know, that uh, you're you're brand new. You've got a new city. It's 12 years old. There's maybe a thousand people living here. You would think in 1800, people in Cincinnati would be saying, oh my God, what are these things? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, I, I landed here and, and decided to start a farm or, a, you know, a, a general store or something like that. I didn't count on having billions of these uh, insects crawling all over me. And no, no, if you look at the newspapers, at the time, there's absolutely no mention. They're just, this is normal. This is. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely no mention. Now, if you look around the country, uh, you know, we, we in Cincinnati are in the center of one of three areas where brood X emerges. So, yeah. so there's like this, this huge area kind of centered around Cincinnati or Indiana. And then there's a, a, a smaller area in Tennessee, but there's a big area in eastern Pennsylvania, which would include Philadelphia. In 1800, Philadelphia knew all about the cicadas, mm. many, many mentions of, of cicadas. Um, the, the newspapers at the time said they canceled church services because the preachers could not be heard. Now, these are in the pre-amplification days right when when the preachers had voices loud enough to carry to the back of the church and uh and and they could not be heard i mean uh, unless you have the the choir of billions but, of uh, bugs right. buzzing just yeah exactly <sighs> and so uh and so the question is well you know if they noticed them in philadelphia why didn't they notice them them here and I think the clue lies in uh, some old engravings, some old prints uh, of the city of Cincinnati. There's there's a a, a, a color print uh, that is labeled Cincinnati in 1800. And one of the things that you will notice, you had mentioned that uh, that you currently live in a, a new housing development where yep. where. They have removed yeah, within the last ten years, so didn't see them for for the first couple of weeks, but now they're they're coming over, yeah. and that's that's the situation in Cincinnati. Every tree from the river out to the hills was cut down. So, ah. so if you showed up in Cincinnati in eighteen hundred when they were still selling uh, property in the original uh, plat of Cincinnati you would have received for your purchase two pieces of land. There was You, you would have bought what they called a town lot. That's mm -hmm. where you put your house. And then you would have acquired an out lot. And so out in what is now over the Rhine, that's where all the farms were, you know. Interesting. And, and of course, it was, it was wooded. And so if you wanted to grow anything there, you had to chop down all the trees. You chopped down all the trees. You pulled up all the roots. Uh, you yep. plowed everything under. And so uh, probably in 1800, the reason nobody really noticed the cicadas is there were very few of them. Uh, 
uh, around. The ground had been turned up. The trees had been cut down. There was nothing for them to yeah, to just un unknowingly eradicated them just right. by you know having their new land. Sure. And so in 1851, uh, there's really like the first mention of of cicadas in Cincinnati, and uh, it's it's a guy who says um, who says when I was a kid in 1817, I saw cicadas and my father uh, told me that, yeah, they, they'd come out in 1800 uh, mm. as well. And, okay. and so, and so it's, it's kind of an old person uh, saying, yeah, I, I remember them from 1817 and my father remembers them from 1800, but there was no, no big deal uh, hmm. about them for, for, the first several occurrences. Now, now once Cincinnati started paying attention to cicadas, uh, there were all sorts of rumors. <laughs> first of, of all, they were convinced they were convinced that that they were fatal. That they were fatal. That that you were going to get stung. Ooh. And if you got stung, uh, you were going to die. I mean, I have I have friends today that believe that that are scared of cicadas that <laughs> yeah will will want to run around in netting so they can't get close to them. And and you know, in actuality, you're you're dealing with uh, with uh, some insects who are probably in the worst courtship environment of all. You know, uh, seventeen years uh, asleep, and you've got what three days to get lucky. Yeah, and. <laughs> And, and if you, those are great, great tinder yeah. rods. And and if you don't, you're you're uh, belly up on the sidewalk and a squirrel's eating you. You know, uh, so uh, what a life! What a life! <laughs> and so uh, in 1868, uh, suddenly you start seeing uh, newspaper accounts saying, "Watch out for these cicadas because they're going to sting you, and and you're going to die." Now, the interesting thing about these newspaper reports is they were never uh, first-person reports. They were never, you know, Susie Smith yeah. uh, on Bank Street got stung and she died. It was always uh, this newspaper up in Dayton says that some kids, further unidentified, got stung and they died, you know. So it is. It's that kind of uh, kind of like an urban legend. Yeah. Well, I mean, pre pre internet, that's kind of like the only thing you had to go on. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Now, you know, at the time, uh, whether whether you were actually getting stung or not, um, you, you you have to remember that that people did die from <laughs> from all sorts of things. The 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 uh, the person that they first tested penicillin on, this, this was a, a, a British man. He was in the hospital because he was gardening and stuck his finger on a rose. Okay, so, oh. so a, 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 ro a thorn. Yeah, a rose a thorn. Rose stuck him, and he was in, in, in the hospital with a severe infection, and they picked him to uh, to do their experiments with with penicillin there was there was so little penicillin available that basically they collected his piss and and strained out the penicillin and put it back in him and Science. and what yeah when they ran out he died you oh, know? Wow. so, so yeah. basically the, the the guy died from a, a prick from a rose thorn so if there were uh, scratches, uh, for instance, you know, there's there's no question that cicadas can scratch you. They've got they've got these pointy little feet that are are used to hang on to trees. You mm -hmm. know, uh, if you get scratched, you could end up seriously ill. You know, and and you might think that you had been stung. You know, so gotcha. so give give them that level of credit. You know. But uh, but that that was the the big fear in 1868. By, so there's uh, no but there's no there's no probability that cicadas used to have these big stingers and they have evolved no, no. to not have them. 
No, the, the, the females have uh, what's called an ovipositor uh, that she burrows into tree branches mm -hmm. and lays eggs. Intriguingly, uh, even though uh, this thing can penetrate bark, uh, it seems incapable of penetrating skin. Hmm. Uh, so so a, a female is not going to uh, mistake a uh, mat for a maple tree and and start laying Wouldn't things be the in first your time. upper arm, you know? <laughs> uh, which uh, on one hand is kind of a shame because it'd be really cool to be in a bar and go, look, I got maggots coming out of my... <laughs> <laughs> that would be super cool. Like you right? go to sleep outside in the tent and you wake up and you're like, oh, oh I guess God. I'm, you know, at, I will be this. Brood X <laughs> and stay, <laughs> stay away from me in 17 years. Exactly, you know, and 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 if you look at the patterns that they make, you know, in the tree branches, you know, yeah. it's kind of a cool design. It looks like beautiful a zipper on your arm, right? You know? Yeah, maybe that'll be that'll be the next in seventeen years. We'll start to in get some. Years, yeah. <laughs> it, uh, you can you can predict the trend trend coming. Who you know? who knows? People are crazy. So so uh, so then in in eighteen eighty five. Uh, when they came back, now we've got a new concern, and and this is my favorite concern. Uh, people were being warned not to eat squirrel pie. Stay away from squirrel pie because the squirrels were eating too many cicadas. The squirrels were eating the cicadas, and there were stories about people getting sick eating squirrel pie where the squirrels had been feasting on, on the cicadas. But the squirrel pie, it's squirrel pie Friday. What else are we it's supposed to pie. eat? <laughs> and so, and so I read this and thought, I, I got to check this out. You know, <laughs> uh, what in the hell is a squirrel pie? And what's the big deal, you mm -hmm. know? Well, it turns out a couple of things. One is uh, you cannot find a cookbook uh, published in the 1800s that does not include a recipe for squirrel pie. It's a staple. This, this is apparently extremely popular. Wow. Now, when, when you find the recipe, you know, recipes back then were, were really pretty weird. Uh, you know, they, they didn't have like, you know, a teaspoon of this and a cup of that. It was like, uh, take some of this and some of that and, throw it all together and, you know, what do you got? Cook, cook it in a warm oven, you know, <laughs> no thermometers, right. Uh -huh. You know, uh, that kind of thing. But when you look at it, you, you, you see, okay. Uh, the squirrel pie has, um, his, his, uh, carrots, uh, it's got peas, uh, it's got uh, cream in it. And so I'm looking at the ingredients thinking, this is basically chicken pot pie. Chicken pot pie, yeah. Chicken pot pie. So, you know, you you, you identify it as squirrel pie, you know, and, you, you know, it should, you should have two squirrels per pie, <laughs> all the recipes, two squirrels per pie. And, and, and ultimately what they're saying is squirrel tastes like chicken. Well, there you go. There you go. <laughs> and if they get, if they're extra crunchy because they had too many cicadas, that's not a good squirrel. You should not be eating that pie. And, and this is a time period when, unless you were fairly wealthy, uh, you did not live in a place with a kitchen. Oh, uh, you know, if, if, if you were, uh, uh, apartments were basically sleeping rooms. So if you rented yeah. a room, you, you got a room and it had a bed and a chair. Uh, if you were lucky, maybe there was a table in there, hmm. but you ate in, in a common, uh, common kitchen. So it was a boarding house. You, you paid for your room, you paid for your board. And, and apparently squirrel pie was so popular because it was an economical meal, uh, for boarding house owners, you know? So, so uh, squirrel was readily available. It did not cost as much as chicken. Hmm. Uh, you know, it tasted like chicken, so <laughs> it was almost as good. <laughs> yeah. And, and your your boarders uh, would appreciate having squirrel pie once a week. This 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 was a very common thing. 
Okay, so they're telling people, don't eat the squirrel pie because they've been eating cicadas mm. and you're all going to die. <laughs> Again. Again. <laughs> Again. <laughs> so What else could they put if not squirrels? If yeah. they couldn't get chicken, what else are you going to put in the pie? Yeah, and 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 you you've raised uh, the one point that I tried to track down and, yeah. and just could not find any evidence for. Chickens eat eat cicadas too, right? And and so if you're warning people about squirrel pie, why aren't you warning them about about chicken, uh, fried chicken, or chicken pot pie? Yeah. Or, or whatever, and and I, I I have yet to find anything that says don't eat the chicken pie or don't don't eat the fried chicken, uh, just don't eat the squirrel pie because they're they're oh, they're eating the pie. the cicadas. So that's awesome. I would I would try a I would try a squirrel pie, squirrel just pie to knock pie. just to knock it off my bucket list. Yeah, the uh, the 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 recipes are are really a lot of fun because apparently. Uh, apparently you got the squirrels uh, fully furred, you know, so, so the recipes always begin, you know, strip the skin off. Yeah. And get the fur off right? you know, and, and chop the tail off and, 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 and that kind of thing. <laughs> Those recipes sound fun. We so, don't, uh, I might enjoy baking a lot more if that's what all the if, recipes if, were. If, if you were deboning a squirrel. Right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Now you got your full fur squirrel. <laughs> yeah. A little different so, than a hot pocket. And uh, intriguingly, about the same time that they're warning people to uh, to avoid the squirrel pie, mm-hmm. 1885 is the year that you start to see local newspapers talking about actually eating cicadas. Now I was now wondering when is, that was going to show up. Yeah. Now this is um, a case where. We have to get into uh, antique vocabulary because nobody called them cicadas. Mm. Nobody called them cicadas. They called them locusts. There was the 17-year locusts, yeah. and that led to a great deal of confusion and and some of the suggestions for reading them because uh, locusts are mentioned in the Bible mm-hmm. and and. John the Baptist, in particular, uh, according to the Bible, subsisted on locusts and honey, and so and so. In 1885, you start seeing these reports saying, Locust "Well, you know, um, it worked for John the Baptist." So, <laughs> <laughs> so forget, forget yeah, the squirrels. So, let's cut out the middleman and just eat. <laughs> Yeah, so why not? Uh, why not uh, eat some of these cicadas? God's providing billions of them. You know, grab them all, and and see uh, see see what they taste like. The uh, intriguing thing is that um, in addition to their edibility, 1885 is when you see a couple of reports without a lot of detail saying cicadas are used in soap making. Okay. And the only thing I can think of is they, they are very uh, rich in fat, uh, you know? So perhaps somebody was crushing them and extracting the fat or something like that. But, uh, it doesn't seem to have caught on because you don't you don't see that mentioned. Yeah, in I don't know how many people would wash themselves with cicada yeah, soap. So, <laughs> yeah, made with genuine cicada fat. I mean, unless unless it like made you invisible to the cicadas, <laughs> like like kind of like a zombie. Now, like they like, now there's the thing, you know. See, they you know, smell you, all- and they're like, oh, you're just like a cicada. So like everyone else is getting attacked and dive bombed into your face, but they just go right past you. On on, on the other hand, uh, depending on the pheromones, it could be your oh. one <laughs> one giant cicada, and uh, <laughs> and know, everyone. I'm, I got three days, and they yeah. just all try to mate with you. <laughs> I'm, I'm, there you go. I'm, I'm on to it. <laughs> so uh, that's worst case scenario. <laughs> So when the word cicada starts appearing Mm -hmm. is is, uh, uh, the next occurrence in 1902. And suddenly, suddenly the rumor mill 
is no longer a reliable source for the for the local newspapers. Uh, suddenly in 1902, everybody got science. And so if, if you're going to ask about the cicadas, uh, you got to talk to a scientist. And of course, mm. the scientist uh, is out there saying, uh, they're not really uh, locusts, you know, <laughs> uh, we call them cicada. And so that that's when you start seeing the word, word nice. cicada uh, start nice. to appear. Listening to the scientists. <laughs> yes. But the uh, uh, it's also in 1902 or around right around that period when our brood X got its name. Mm. You know, there there you, you see something like that brood X and you think, well, this is a fairly recent thing. I mean, when when did scientists start paying attention to this on a national level? When did they start drawing these maps and all that? The maps existed in 1902. Wow. And, and, okay. and the, brood, the, way the broods, the broods had different names and they had, uh, ours was called brood X, which, um, is, is really cool because, you know, if you're going to have a brood brood X, you know, sounds kind right. of metal, strong, know. big, right. powerful right. brood. Right. But, but the alternative was not brood D or brood Q or anything like that. Uh, brood X is actually brood 10. It's, it's uh, Roman, Roman numerals. So the, the, the alternative would have been brood V111, right. you know, which is not metal at all. No, not as fun. Yeah, brood, brood X is, is, is the way to go. And so the, um, uh, so the Cincinnati Post in 1902 on this matter of, of diet reported a, uh, a Cincinnatian who uh, invited a bunch of people over and he served dinner consisting of cicada soup, mm. cicada fritters, cicada pie, and cicadas on toast. Ah, uh, delicious. Okay. <laughs> the Cincinnati Post um, also reported that no one asks for seconds. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's so, interesting. Going yeah. from don't eat the squirrel pie don't because the squirrel they pie. could have possibly eaten cicadas to come to my cicada eating party. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so this is also another turning point uh, in Cincinnati. Uh, again, going back to old images of Cincinnati. Before, before 1902, uh, you know, the end of the 1800s and that, uh, there, there were trees in Cincinnati. You can see trees, but if you look at the photographs of the city at the time, the hillsides are very bare uh, because uh, trees were, were not just for shade and trees were not just for decoration. Yeah. Uh, trees were for houses and trees were for fuel. And, and so uh, trees were pretty much chopped down uh, in Cincinnati until um, by, by the early 1900s, we had a reliable source of coal and, uh, and oil and uh, natural gas was, was starting to come in. And so there was no, no need any longer to cut down trees. And so as you get into the 1900s, now you run into the situation that you described earlier where you see a tree and the bark is moving and you think, why is the bark moving? And you realize <laughs> it's totally covered. It's in all cicadas. cicadas. Yeah. The, the, the first reference you see to something like that is the 1919 appearance. And, and they're talking about in particular college Hill and how, um, how, how they had to send city crews out to college Hill to shovel the streets uh, from for dead cicadas, piling them up in these mounds over ten feet high. Wow! And setting them on fire. Oh man! So that's too many cicadas. So 1919. Now we're now we're in the the immolation uh, yep. phase of of this thing, and by 1936. 1936, uh, 
you know, the, they, they warn you, if you're going to cut your grass, try, try to do it after the cicadas have gone to sleep at night uh, because they're attracted by noise. Hmm. Uh, the Bavarian brewery in Covington shut down for several days uh, because they, um, they had several truckloads of cicadas clogging the uh, cooling tower Wow. At the at the brewery. And so and so Cincinnati's beer supply was impacted. That's that's taking it too far. Cicadas. That is that is that's beyond the trouble. pale, beyond <laughs> the pale. So the uh, the the, uh, uh, the 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 one thing that I did want to mention this, this is an, uh, a concept that I totally stole. Uh, I ripped it off shamelessly. Uh, but there is a, uh, a wonderful dude in town named um, Joe Hoffecker. Mm -hmm. Joe was, uh, uh, for many years, a cartoonist at the Cincinnati Business Courier. Okay. And Joe, Joe did the research and the math. And what he did is he evaluated the Cincinnati Reds only in the years when cicadas made their appearance. <laughs> that's amazing okay so so 1885 yeah. 1902 1919 and of course 1919 world champions right there you go thank you cicadas. 1936 uh, 1953 and so on what joe discovered is that um during the eight seasons so far not counting this year that the that the reds have been uh playing during a cicada emergence their record is 633 to 553. So that's, that's a, a 534 percentage. Yeah, so bad. Uh, it includes one world championship, two National League pennants, and two second place finishes out, wow. out of just eight years. So yeah, that's, that's that not bad. Bodes pretty well for the Reds this year. Yeah, well, I mean, someone should give them the memo because they are not <laughs> not playing up to their previous Brood X yeah, season maybe they par. Just have to wait until until the cicadas are gone before yeah, they, they, they finally uh, shake off the doldrums. That's funny. And, I wonder what that is. It's like they hear that, yeah. like it's just like a pause. They're just like, yeah, all right, let's go, team. See? <laughs> there you go. So yeah, that's a. That's an awesome, awesome sports stat there. Cicadas yeah. into Reds and, baseball. And, 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 you know, since, since, uh, Brood X, uh, covers Philadelphia, somebody ought to come up with the same statistics for the Phillies, right? There you go. Yeah. We'll see if it's helping all the teams in its little area. But, uh, but yeah, that, that, that's what we've got. The, uh, and and it, uh, it 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 enables us to bring uh, Gene Kritsky uh, out in public, uh, the the cicada guru from the college or University of Mount St. Joseph now. Yeah. Um, uh, Gene Gene does uh, an enormous amount of work. Um, all these other years, but the only time that people want to talk to him is during the cicada thing. So. Yeah. Well, there you go. I mean, it's a big every every 17 years. So that's going all the way back. That's interesting to hear from you had this this old man talking about the 1800 and the yeah. what the 1817, 1817. And, and saying, oh, you know, my my dad said that they happened 17 years ago to going yeah. from don't eat them to eat them to now where we where we are today, where it's kind of. They're more of an annoyance. We don't have people running around saying they're going to sting you and kill you. <laughs> so and, that's and not many warnings about avoiding squirrel pie this year. Yeah, no, I've, I haven't seen I haven't seen as many. Not that I can <laughs> recall. <laughs> that's awesome. All right, cicadas going back to two centuries here to stay. I mean, I don't think we're going to get rid of all the trees in Cincinnati, so they are not going to. They're not going to go away. We're going to see them this year. We're going to see them in 17 years. How long do they usually last? So they are, I can't remember 17 years ago. I remember them being a lot, but I don't remember when they kind of went away. Yeah, is that end the, of summer uh, or is that? 
No, 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 no. The uh, by by July, by Fourth of July, they should they should be all gone. Okay, that's good news. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm hoping they hang on for at least another week. My my son is bringing his wife down from Chicago. <laughs> She's from the Pacific Northwest, and nice. uh, and uh, and doesn't believe him. <laughs> <laughs> that they're just there are locusts everywhere in Cincinnati, everywhere. <laughs> and, and so so he's bringing her down next week. So I. I'm hoping they last, the, you know, at least one more week. But, uh, yeah. but really, by the end of June, they're, okay. they're usually disappeared. Yeah, I mean, there's got to be places. My friend was sending me videos from the west side where it's just giant trees all over, like, this farmland where it's just the entire tree, the entire fence, and you can't exactly. hear anything. It's just this. Yep. Crazy. Yeah, you can't. Uh, you can hear them in the uh, backyard you, you right now. You cannot hear the air conditioner. Uh, air conditioning unit in the backyard they, they overpower that crazy and yet uh and and yet it's i think it's still the case that there aren't that many downtown yeah uh, you know so and and you can tell that the birds um i don't know about the squirrels i haven't been watching <laughs> them but the birds are sure happy out here yeah yeah i'm sure i've, I've seen it's it's like a wildlife <laughs> like they just like unlocked some kind of, you know, secret food source. And now they're just like, all right. And everyone, all the animals That's are right. going crazy about it. Yeah. The buffet's on. The buffet is on. <laughs> there you go. Not just for the wild animals, for people too. If you want to have the chocolate cicadas or, uh, the you know. Snappy cicada pizza. There you go. Yep. <laughs> or just, you know, the old fashioned squirrel cicada pie or locusts and honey however you want to eat your cicadas we have two centuries of recipes for you beautiful all right well thank you for coming on again to talk about the history of cicadas if you want to continue to follow greg hand follow his blog at cincinnati curiosities um just google that and he will continue to talk about the Cincinnati in the late 1800s and early 1900s. And we will have you on uh, next week. Thank you for coming on. You got it. Always a pleasure. Take care.